So you sent this letter out to your colleagues this morning. What kind of response have you got? Uh, mostly uh, support. It's been pretty incredible. Everyone's flying into town today, though, so I haven't spoken with everyone. But most of the members I've talked to agree with what I've said. Um, they may not come out and publicly say it. Many are relieved I've said it, and I've even heard within the ranks of leadership uh, there's agreement there. So um, There's agreement from members of the leadership. With, your, with my saying. letter, with uh -huh. much of what I said in the letter. Um, mm -hmm. This is difficult to do. This is not what I would like to be doing, but I believe it's necessary. Uh, it's, this isn't a personal attack against Mike Johnson himself or his staff in any way, but Mike Johnson has completely betrayed our conference, um, and his leadership cannot be allowed to continue going forward in what, this manner. What uh, is, you know, you've been saying that since you uh, introduced this resolution a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. What's holding you back from actually calling for a vote here? Well, you know, Manu, I really respect my conference. And in my letter, I laid out how I am a team player and the ways that I have supported our majority. I'm one of the few members that has paid all of my NRCC dues. I fought for this majority. I'm fighting for the next majority. I know how critical that is. And in doing so, I don't want to throw our conference into chaos. Mike Johnson has already done that. We are a conference in chaos right now because our Republican Speaker of the House is passing major bills without the majority of the majority's support. In doing so, respecting my conference and the other members in the conference, I need to communicate with them. And so I wrote that letter today laying out all the reasons with specific examples that no one can argue with so that they can understand my reasoning, have time to think it over, and we can come together and start talking about this. I also put it out publicly because I think it's important for the American people to read. I don't want them to just see us up here fighting constantly because one of the things that people want is they want us to figure out how to get along in Washington, work together, and do the right thing. And, you know, I come from a business background, and the way you get a job done for your customers, I view the American people as our customers, is we have to work together. So this letter to my colleagues is the beginning of that. First, we admit the problems. First, we admit the wrongs. And then we come up with a plan for change. I'm working on the changes that I would like to see, and I'll be proposing with my colleagues, um, and I look forward to talking with them about that. Is it changes in terms of specific people who would be the next Speaker of the House? I haven't gotten to that step yet, but that may be something I move toward. Of course, that would be private conversations in our conference. Um, I, I personally would love it if a Speaker of the House is chosen uh, by a public vote, but it's not that way. Mm -hmm. The Speaker of the House is chosen by the majority and control in Congress, and that is a private vote that starts within the conference mm -hmm. itself. So those are conversations we have to have privately first. Um, but you know what? I'm very transparent with the people. I, I will be communicating my thoughts and, and plans going forward, of course, with my district. That's why I had a town hall last night before I came to Washington this week. Um, but we have to make a change, and we have to actually follow through in action what our words say. But and that's most important. Are you worried about... You, know, you saw what happened last fall, this being a chaotic 22 days and beyond and unable to get behind another speaker. Are you worried about chaos in the middle of an election year? Well, of course I'm worried about chaos in an election year. Mike Johnson has put us into chaos. Do you realize that all of my colleagues had to go back to their districts and campaign on the fact that our Republican elected speaker passed the Biden uh, agenda? that he funded the Department of Justice that has 91 federal indictments against President Trump, that he funded the FBA, FBI that raided mar lago uh, that he funded Biden's open border, which is the number one issue in America. Yes, we are in chaos, and that's coming from Mike Johnson, our Republican elected speaker. Am I concerned about a contentious, difficult three and a half weeks electing a speaker? Absolutely. I was miserable during that time. All of us were. I'm not going to throw our conference into chaos. I will not give our majority to the Democrats, but I will work this process respectfully with my colleagues. But I am not backing away of leading this, and I am not backing down from having those difficult conversations. That's what comes with leadership, and my colleagues need to be ready and be prepared for that.